This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917 and sponsored in part by Tourism Northern Territory, Australia's Outback. Air travel provided by Qantas, the spirit of Australia. Thousands of years ago, a little old woman lived in a cave at the base of Uluru. And this little old woman was called the Woolly Wagtail Woman. The Woolly Wagtail is called Jintir Jintir Pa by the local Aboriginal people in this area. Legend has it that this little old woman used to listen or eavesdrop on the conversations of men at their mala ceremonies in the area. And even today, if you find a group of men talking and a woolly wagtail walks up beside them, they will keep dead quiet in case this woolly wagtail woman is eavesdropping on their conversation. As well as common birds like the jintir, jintir pa, this week's quest for our golden bird, the western bowerbird, takes us to the outback of the Northern Territory, the Red Centre. This is the perfect habitat for this bird. Beautiful plumes. Look at the plumes on the neck and the head. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome. That's our golden bird. Alice Springs is the largest outback town in the Red Centre. But we've come at a time of the year which is entirely atypical of this stark, almost desert-like landscape. Standing here today, one wouldn't think that this is called the Red Center because there's an outburst of beautiful greenery around here thanks to incredibly unseasonal rains. In fact, in the last two months, there's been more rain in Alice Springs than in the last two years. And what that means is that in this acacia woodland behind me here, there is an abundance of species which are normally very difficult to find. Let's go, Burden! The outback town of Alice Springs is set on the banks of the Todd River and this is really the gateway to the Red Centre and we headed out with Mark and Shane from Trek Lara Pinta to go and see what this arid landscape held in store for us. The Red Centre is a not to be missed birding destination on any visit to Australia and holds a whole lot of species which are difficult to find elsewhere in the country. A lot of the more common species that we came across were birds like spinifex pigeon, pied honey eaters, crimson chats, red-tailed black cockatoos, two species of kingfishers including sacred and red-backed kingfishers, crested bellbird, white-winged trillers, budgerigars and the cackling grey-crowned babblers. One of the pleasures of being out here at the moment with the, the, the wet weather that we've had is we've had a real influx of uh, some pretty awesome birds and one of the most iconic that everyone knows is the budgerigar, uh, a really amazing little bird. They look very bright, they don't look like it's a great colour to be out here in the desert, but actually once you get one up in a gum tree, they're almost invisible. It's perfect camouflage, that yellow and green coloration. And everywhere that we go at the moment, everywhere that there's gum trees, we've got budgies there exploring, looking for nest holes, meeting each other, having romance, and starting that process of creating the next generation of budgies. And it's happening here right now, it's a really exciting time. Some of the prime birding spots in the Red Centre are in places which are called gaps. Now gaps are places where there's been tectonic shifts in the landscape and the water in the low-lying areas has eroded these gaps through the landscape. So you've got these sort of mountain ranges with these huge gaps in between them and these gaps hold deep water underneath the ground and this is where a lot of the vegetation comes which in turn attracts a lot of the birds. We headed out to three of the best known gaps Simpsons Gap, Emily Gap and Jesse Gap. On our way to Simpsons Gap to search for birds and mammals, we came across a flock of gorgeous red-tailed black cockatoos. 
Red-tailed black cockatoos are the closest relatives of the glossy black cockatoos that we filmed on Kangaroo Island in South Australia for another birding adventure show. The Red Center has an impressive array of bird life, but it is also very well known for its mammals. This is Simpsons Gap in West McDonald's National Park, and this place has got superb biodiversity, right from amphibians right up to the bigger mammals. And this afternoon, we're in quest of two mammals in particular, the elusive dingo and the unique black-footed rock wallaby. And this is one that actually I think anyone is going to really appreciate seeing, is the, the rock wallabies. They're a species of wallaby which is specialized to live on almost sheer cliffs. The soles of their pads have uh, almost like Velcro. Uh, it's very rough pads. They can use these to get a grip on the sandstone and pretty much just jump up like any mountain goat. They're as good as any mountain goat, any chamois, anywhere else in the world. And they live on these cliffs and hide in the caves during the day and they come out at dusk. And they're very easy to see. Very easy to see here. One of the few places in the country you can have that sort of experience with them. We were lucky enough to come across a dingo too, which is seldom seen around Alice Springs. Making ourselves some lunch here before we head off to Ayers Rock. And I think we're going to hook up Mike with a really nice Vegemite sandwich. Shh. If you've never tried Vegemite before, it's definitely an acquired taste. And we're going to lay it on thick. It's gone to the toilet, so we don't have much time. Let's put as much of this stuff on as possible. Let's hope that he doesn't check what he's eating, which probably won't be the case. He's quite a large dude, so he's probably just going to eat whatever we give him. Yummy. Okay, you can't see any of it from the outside. Hey, buddy. Fixed you up some lunch here. Yeah? Time to grub, huh? Yeah, it's yours. Look at mine, right, yeah. Man. Swig Chow of down. Let me get a little swig of water or something like that. Sure. Mmm. These flies are unbelievable. Mm. Oh! What's wrong? <coughs> What's wrong? Get the water. What's wrong? <laughs> Bitch, mud. What is that, dude? <laughs> oh, it's the worst thing I've ever tasted. Oh, it's Vegemite, buddy. Welcome to Australia. Light the fires and kick the tires. Under the rock. A birding trip to Northern Territory is incomplete without a visit to Uluru or Ayers Rock, a sacred Aboriginal site and an arid, dry place of stupendous scenic beauty. But we got to experience Uluru like few others in the wet. Visiting the Red Center uh, was a different experience. Certainly I expected to get there. I always thought that Ayers Rock would be very sunny, uh, blue sky behind it, hot, right? And we get there and it's just pouring down rain. And according to the rangers, uh, I've heard a couple different numbers, anywhere from a half percent to three percent of the visitors that visit Ayers Rock actually get to see rain. So I, I feel that I'm in the minority there and it was really interesting to see the waterfalls cascading right off the rock. Red Center holds even more. This particular area of the country holds one of the highest diversities of reptiles anywhere in Australia. And we were very lucky to go out with Rex from the Reptile Center in Alice Springs to show us some of these fascinating reptiles. Here we've got a uh, baby parenti and uh, it's only just hatched out as you can see. It's only a very, very tiny one. They're absolutely stunning. Uh, the other thing you can notice is some of the old skin's just starting to come off at the moment, so oh, it's yeah, actually it's shedding its skin. And when they shed the skin underneath, you've got the beautiful new skin coming out underneath. Absolutely stunning. Now, in the background, 
you can see mum sitting behind us having a look yeah. <laughs> and baby's just seen as well and freaking out. Now the reason why baby's freaking out is of course uh, mum will lay the eggs and she basically never sees baby ever again, she's just gone. And if she happens to stumble along and, and sees one of the babies, that's just food. There's no such thing as mum looking after baby whatsoever. Now mum will lay the eggs up to maybe one to two metres underground, cover them up, never ever see them again. And these things, the eggs are huge, probably at least twice the size of a chicken's egg, and they take up to nine months to hatch out, whereas most reptiles are probably hatching out in two to three months. So these are nine months to hatch out. As Soon as they hatch out, bang, they're gone, and everything eats a baby. So wedgetail eagles, hawks, of course, mum will eat them, dad will eat them, uh, snakes will eat them, so everything eats a baby. So the baby just gets out and hightails the nearest bit of cover it can find. And of course, a baby like this will eat uh, insects when they're young, They'll also eat baby snakes, uh, skinks, geckos, those sort of things. As they get older, they become the biggest full-on predator in this area and nothing will touch them when they're big. Well, we better let this little baby go a little bit further away. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mum's got a very careful eye on at the moment and uh, she'll hold it down straight away. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, mate. No problems. No worries. <laughs> This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. Whilst birding in the Northern Territory, you might be lucky enough to come across one of the goanna species, like this Spencer's goanna. It's one of the only reptiles that has a forked tongue, just like a snake. And these guys will feed on other reptiles, snakes, small rodents, but also ground dwelling and ground nesting birds. They'll feed on the eggs of birds, they'll feed on the nestlings, and they'll feed on the birds themselves. You can see these incredibly sharp claws are extremely well suited to burrowing and excavating burrows in which the Spencer's goanna lives in. An absolute beauty, the Spencer's goanna. This is Birding from the Edge. This afternoon we're on the quest for our golden bird, the Western Bowerbird. We're situated right now in Chinaman Creek, next to Mount Gillen, just outside Alice Springs, and we're going to be making our way through this acacia woodland to a specific habitat type called Mulga Woodland. This is where these bowerbirds like to hang out and build their bowers to attract females. Let's see if we can get a look. Let's go chase. With these atypical rains comes manna from heaven in the form of grasshoppers. Just swarms of grasshoppers and locusts attracted by these rains. And with this manna from heaven in the form of these delectable insects comes a whole variety of very interesting birds. But it wasn't just the birds that took advantage of this source of protein. BATV executive producer Jeff Aderman couldn't resist either. What have you got there, Jeff? Um, <laughs> little snack. Afternoon snack in the outback, Jack. Oh, it looks like it's alive, too. Oh, it's, yeah, it's moving. Oh, it's kicking. Mm. Uh, my. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yummy. Mulga woodland is a specific habitat type that is preferred by western bowerbirds in this area. The reason why it is such a suitable site for these bowerbirds to build their bowers is because of this. They've got a nice thick upper story and the understory is very sparse, which allows these bowerbirds to set the stage. So this bird was, uh, he was using a site further up here for the bower, but that fell from favour, who knows why, and uh, he's obviously scouted around and f to look for a new site, and that really threw me, I, I was looking around and really concerned that we weren't going to have a bower here, um, but I think we're in luck, I see something over here, so. We're going to try and be as quiet as possible walking through this Mulga woodland, see if we can situate ourselves close to this bower. We found the bower right here in this Mulga woodland. It's unattended right now, so I think we're going to situate ourselves here 
wait and see if this bird comes back. After about 30 minutes of patient waiting, we heard the scolding approach call of a male western bowerbird. Smoking ponies, look at this show pony, our golden bird. Western bowerbirds are distantly related to birds of paradise. And while birds of paradise use their bodies as ornamental displays for the females, bowerbirds have lost this ability and have rather chosen music and art. Art in the form of these wonderfully constructed bowers and music in their ability to mimic a whole variety of different songs. From car alarms to cats fighting to other birds, they have an incredible musical repertoire. And if fine art galleries and a worldly music collection fail to impress, the male bowerbird has one further trick up his sleeve. A dance routine that will seriously ruffle the feathers of his competitors. But like any pro dancer, this routine requires attention to detail and much practice. <laughs> Western Bowerbird flew in and it just didn't stand there. I mean, we got the entire display. We got him practicing, dancing his wings, kind of showing us his crest at the back of his head, picking up things and placing them. We got him fixing his bower, tearing it apart, fixing it again. Really almost fanatical about his bower, making sure that this is gonna be the most incredible stage for the female when she comes in. The Western Bowerbird prefers the colors white, green, and silver. And it was fascinating to watch this Bowerbird picking up and displaying these various items in his bower. In areas where Western Bowerbirds are close to human habitation, you'll even find some pretty familiar items. Children's toys, for instance, lids of cool drinks. There's even a few skulls in here, and also some seashells. Female bowerbirds are notoriously finicky birds, and that is why these male bowerbirds become obsessed with their bowers. So much so that when there's a female close to the bower, the male will come running up to her with a precious object, showing her this absolute treasure and trying to get her to buy into this whole thing. The male will then try and lure her back into the bower and try and do this little dance almost like a Fred Astaire dance, trying to get her attention. And when the male knows that he's close to sealing the deal, is when the female follows him down the passage bower, almost like leading her to the altar down the wedding aisle. Well, that was just astounding, guys. Here we are on this Malga Acacia, witnessing one of the most fascinating spectacles. I mean, it's almost out of this world, almost alien, to see a bird doing what we've just witnessed. The intelligence, the dedication, it's just fascinating. How was that for you, Mike? Oh, no doubt, just being able to see it, and actually the, the staging grounds, you, you've never seen anything like it before. Uh, just that perfect U shape. It's almost, uh, I mean, it, it is just perfect, you know? It's just so, so alien, like you say. So yeah, excellent. Really neat. Mark, thank you so much. That's Thanks. our golden bird, the Western Bowerbird, right here in Alice Springs in the Northern Territory of Australia. We're gonna leave this Western Bowerbird now and head out to go and do some birding. So we're gonna set up our bird cam here for the rest of the afternoon and see what images we can get while we're away. The Red Centre is really the last frontier almost in birding in Australia. Other parts of the country are very well known and uh, people have been going there for years, but people have never really 
spent much time looking to see what's here in the red center. There's a lot of the birds that are out here are really elusive, very hard to find, they're nomadic. Uh, they're a real challenge and a lot of people in the past have felt it's just a bit too hard. Um, but now there's a new generation of bird are coming along who really sees that this, this is what they want. They want the challenge, they want to see some of these awesome birds that we have out here. And uh, to get the chance in Australia to go out and be one of the few who's seen this sort of bird and get familiar with it, that's a real privilege and this is the place to do it. We'd like to thank Northern Territory Tourism, we'd like to thank Shane and Mark from Trek Lara Pinta and the folks at Uluru Katajuta National Park for making all of this possible. You know, the Northern Territory really is a spectacular birding destination and the Red Centre in the heart of Northern Territory cannot be missed on any visit to Australia. If you want to visit Northern Territory Australia and take advantage of an exclusive offer for Birding Adventures viewers, log on to territorydiscoveries.com forward slash birding adventures. That's territorydiscoveries.com forward slash birding adventures.